Hi, hello, is this DC? It is. Hey, this is How Tommy you, Bryson. Tom? How are you, man? Good. All right, cool. This one is just going to be recorded and potentially uploaded. How can I help? Uh, yes, I was uh, calling to talk to you about... Um, where did I put my notes at here? Oh, combining uh, my... I was watching one of your videos, your, well, I guess one of your latest ones, where you said you were uh, changing your investment strategy and you mm -hmm. were talking about talking about um, changing your platforms and just putting them into one, into the M1 Finance. Okay. What yeah. What is the advantage of that? Is there an advantage to it? Um, because you were saying, you know, not to put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. But that's not, but that's not putting all your eggs in one basket, just on one platform. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Now, now what do you currently use? I've got uh, SoFi, Fidel, M1 Finance, and Acorns. How much do you have invested overall? Uh, about 35000 How old are you? Pardon? How old are you? Yes. No, how old are you? How, how old, old are you? Am I? Yeah, how old are you? Yeah. <laughs> 64. All right, awesome. All right. You have any like other additional accounts, like into retirement because of so on? Like it's what? I'm sorry. Do you have any additional accounts, for example, in retirement accounts? Well, that would be with Fidel. Fidel okay. Ring. So in total, you just have $35,000 invested, right? Correct. All right, cool. What do you invest into, by the way? I follow your, pl your plan. All right, cool. Now, the main reason I use M1 Finance for my taxable account if I could qualify for a Roth IRA, I'd probably have it in there also. It's because mm -hmm. it allows me to do the three most important things when it comes to investing. The first thing is, it's very easy to diversify inside there and make sure everything is perfectly balanced. Because basically, you can set up the ratios for your investments. And every time you actually invest money, it splits the money in a way where automatically it invests exactly the way you would want it to invest. For example, if you say, well... I want to make sure my money does 50% into the stock ETFs I have, 50% into the bond ETFs I have. Whenever you put in a dollar, it'll split it evenly so that way all your investments get exactly what you wanted them to. Does that make sense? Yes. I understand on, that concept. On top of that, they do like um, rebalancing. They have two ways. They have dynamic rebalancing. By the way, rebalancing is basically if you want 50-50, right? Bond stocks. But as you know, the stock market doesn't just go up it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it fluctuates. So sometimes, for example, your stocks are going to be maybe higher than your bonds and the ratio might go off from 50-50 to 60-40 or whatever it is. Now, the way M1 Finance does is basically, every time you invest money, it makes it so basically, instead of putting money into your stocks, it'll put money into your bonds to bring it back up to its normal ratio. Or for example, if you wanna rebalance normally, Every 12 months or 18 months, you click two buttons, rebalance, and then boom, it does it for you automatically also. On top of that, lastly, it makes it easier to do, for example, dollar cost average. Because with all those features, it sets it up basically, you can invest your money automatically into them, into the exact way you want to invest into, and it keeps the balance that you actually want to keep. M1 Finance overall, it's just a platform that's just a lot better when it comes to long-term investors. Does that make sense? Yes. That's okay. why I use M1 Finance. Now, one thing is, right, you can have, for example, um, a taxable account with them, which I do also. You can have a retirement account with them also. I don't have that because basically I can't qualify for a Roth IRA. So I have my Vanguard. I mean, I have my 401k with Vanguard. That's why I don't have that portion with them because they don't have that, that product over there. Now, one thing is, um, DC, you have 35K, you're 64 years old. Um, do you have any debt? No. Okay. So you're. Well, other than my mortgage, that's it. Okay. How much do you owe on that? About 20, 22, I think it is. Congratulations. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, no debt, just the mortgage. And what's your income? Around. Um, Right now, it's 
at about twenty eight a year. Okay, twenty eight thousand dollars a year. So, how much do you invest of your income? Tell me about your budget right now. Like, what are you doing with your money? Uh, let's see. I put about thirty percent over my out of the uh, in the investments. Mm -hmm. I put. I try to max out my Roth, mm -hmm. and then after that, I put uh, about. 15% into the taxable income. Okay, so in total, you're telling me you're investing around 45% of your money? About that, yes. Okay, so you're living off of 45%? Right. Okay. So you're very frugal, basically. Yeah, some people call it cheap, but yeah, they call it what they like. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have <laughs> hey DC do you have an emer do you have an emergency account I do how much do you have six in there six months okay awesome six months I love to hear that now here here's gonna be my advice here right DC your strategy as far as investing is a lot like mine initially which it has changed a lot initially my goal was to invest somewhere around 95% of my income to 50% right I was going to right. invest, 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 because basically I was going to build building passive income in the future. Now, I was right. losing track of something very important, which is basically, well, what happens if something happens to me and I can't pay my mortgage or something crazy happens? Or for example, if I do retire, let's say with a half a million dollars in there or or a hundred K, whatever it is, and then boom, right then and there, the market drops to 50%. And now I have to wait for a recovery but I also don't have any income. So I'm gonna be forced to do something I don't wanna do. For example, like selling my investments. So if I were DC right now, 64 years old, frugal guy, making $28,000 a year, investing 45% of income, what would I currently do? The first thing is I already have an emergency account. I already, I'm already debt free, so that's awesome. So basically, you don't have to clean anything up. Now, what I would do is basically, I already, I'm very frugal, by the way, because basically your budget is amazing, most likely. You have four things, which is shelter, um, transportation, groceries, utilities, and you keep them very low, so that's awesome. But what I would do is basically, instead of investing 45% of my income, I would only invest between 10 to 20%. The other 25% of my income, I would go ahead and put it towards my mortgage. Why? Because this way, DC, for example, if you put an additional 25% towards your mortgage, in your case right now, the rule is maybe like 10, 15%, that's fine. But the goal is the faster you're done with your mortgage, the lower your cost of living is going to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now, for example, your risk level just goes down dramatically because let's say you do this plan three years from now, you have no mortgage whatsoever. Now you're telling me, well, my cost of living is drastically low. I still make the same amount of money, but now I have even more money to go ahead and invest or enjoy some of the nice things in life. That would be my plan right now currently as I speak if I were DC. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so work on the mortgage as opposed to so much yeah. invested. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is the thing is DC, I you can control your mortgage because once you pay it off, it's just taxes and insurance doesn't fluctuate but the entire right. investment account you have 35k but by tomorrow you can have 10k that's right. crazy right and the main thing yeah. is you have to be able to outlive or for example be patient enough to see your money actually recover if you follow my plan very rarely are you gonna like drop by 50 percent even under like um crazy like market situations but you have to be right. able to wait and have money there to actually buy during that time so my priority would be hey I'll invest 15%, maybe 20%. Now, does your job right now give you, for example, like a match or anything like that? Yes, it does. But uh, uh, I'm just, I'm about ready to exit that anyway. I'm getting ready to retire, so. All right, yeah. So if you're getting ready to retire and you don't want to take advantage of the match, that's fine. So I basically put the 15, 20% of my income, I'll put it, for example, into my Roth. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you might not be able to max it out with your current income because, by the way, if you make, let's just do some quick math here. 
um, $28,000 multiplied by 15%, it's only around $4,200, right? You might be able to put $4,000 up to taxes, whatever it is. But the answer is mm -hmm. priority here is the entire like um, mortgage. Right. Once you're done with the mortgage, you have all this extra income to just go ahead and invest, 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 and enjoy your life. Now, what's your cost of living per month? Uh, about fourteen hundred. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, fourteen hundred. Okay, and including the how much is the house? How much is the mortgage out of that? Uh, two fifty. Wow. Yeah, so that's very low. So, all right, two fifty is the mortgage. How much do you have left on that mortgage? How many years? Um, I think it's ten, maybe. It's a long time. Now, let's see here, because I wanna I wanna run some quick numbers here, because I wanna find out where all this money is flowing through. So, if you're telling, and you make how much per month? Average, let's see, uh, 22. Okay. 2200 So if you are making $2,200, so 1400 divided by 2200 automatically you're spending around 63% of your money. So, so you're probably not investing 45% of your income. More like maybe like 35 to maybe like 30%, right? So why, that's why it's so important to like have a budget in place. Now, this means, right. for example, in a budget, you have four walls. If you want to be very frugal, right? You have shelter. That's basically your mortgage currently. And that's, for example, $250 on your mortgage. And then you have, let's say, um, utilities, right? How much would you say you spend on that? Utilities are more like um, water, lights, um, internet, maybe cable, if you have that stuff. Yeah. How much? Uh, let's see. Electric would be one ten. Let's see what it was. The utilities would be about three hundred. Okay. So three hundred dollars in utilities, and then you have groceries. How much do you spend there? That's uh, about hundred fifty. Okay. And transportation. Insurance, um, gas. Transportation is about sixty dollars. Sixty dollars okay. a week, so a week. Yeah. Wow. What is that for gas? Right. Well, we have to include the insurance also. So if we're talking about sixty dollars just for gas per week, times where are you going to? It's a lot of money in what gas. It's a lot of money in gas. Well, not really. Two hundred and forty dollars a month on gas. Well, you have to you work six days a week or five days a week. Okay, okay. So you have to you have to fill up at least once a week to get okay. back and forth to work. Okay, and what's your insurance? Uh, sixty dollars a month. All right, so let's say you're spending around $300 in total on this car, right? Sounds right? Okay, yeah. Okay, $300, 150 for food, 300 for utilities, plus 250, right? That's only $1,000. Right. And you're spending somewhere around you said 1400. So there's a yep. so there's a $400 um missing money we have there. So the point is, we got to find out where that money is going and if the place that it's going to is actually worth it for you. But if it's not, and you're saying, well, Tommy, I can have $1,200 extra every single month. That means $1,200 extra multiply by 12. That's around $14,400. Once you deduct, for example, what you're actually investing, which might be, for example, 20%, meaning you keep 80%, that's around $11,520. Meaning, for example, if you owe on this mortgage, you said tw how much is it? You twenty-two thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So, meaning if you uh, by in two years you're sixty-four now, by the time you're turning sixty-six, you're completely done with this mortgage. 
And once you're done with this mortgage in two years, the next step is basically you just keep investing that 15, 20%. You already have your emergency account. If you want to invest more, you can if you want to at this point. If you want to have more fun, you can if you want to. Yeah. Now, when you do retire, is your income going to stay somewhere around the same or is it going to go down drastically? Oh, I'll probably drop off about around about 16000 I guess. You'll drop down to 16000 About sixteen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it would be so important to get rid of that um that mortgage as fast as possible because that's bills you don't have to worry about anymore. That 250 right. times 12... That's going to save you around $3,000. And you also have security saying like, hey, I'm going to be fine in my house and all that stuff. Everything's going to be just fine here. Does that make sense? That's what I'm looking for, yes. Yeah. So I would I would work towards pay off my mortgage as fast as possible, lower my investment rate to maybe like 15 20%. That's it. Into my Roth IRA. And when the time mm -hmm. comes, you'll have some money in there. But you'll have to keep, if you want, keep investing or just keep living off of what you got. Okay. Yeah, but remember that, right? DC, when you do when you do decide to retire and mm -hmm. the home is paid off, your mm -hmm. your maintenance expenses are gonna drop to seven fifty. So seven fifty times twelve is gonna be somewhere around nine thousand dollars a year. Which means you're even when you even though you'll drop to sixteen thousand dollars, you'll still have a mm -hmm. surplus of five thousand dollars. Does that make sense? Uh, you lost me. Okay, okay. So what I'm saying is your maintenance expenses are the mandatory ones, right? Shelter, utilities, right. groceries, transportation. Right, right now, mm -hmm. currently, that's a $1,000. That's twelve k per year. Now, okay. when you pay off this mortgage, when you retire and it's done two years, boom, you're done there. You're right. only going to be spending seven fifty a week, I mean a month, because basically your your shelter cost, mortgage, is not going to be there anymore. Has so dropped, you, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So when you multiply seven fifty by 12, you get the number 9000 If you're telling me I'm going to make $16,000 a year, and I'm only going to be able to spend mm -hmm. $9,000 on my maintenance, you still have mm -hmm. $5,000 extra that you don't really need. So that money, you can do whatever you actually want with it. That's sounds just great that's that's the goal sounds, there sounds like i could retire and be happy sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly 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 and just enjoy your life however you want to enjoy it all right exactly yes all right. wonderful all right brother any more questions or you're good uh that should be just about it. oh i do have one more question because you were talking about i in one of your videos where you had invested in um what was the airline? Was it Delta? Yeah. Yeah, and I was wondering why you invested in Delta as opposed to going into the Jets. Is it JTS? I think it is. The uh, that's the what would it be? Um, I think it it has all the other airlines in it. Hmm. Do you mean maybe like an an ETF or something that tracks all the airlines? You mean like you mean that? I guess so, yeah. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm not really sure about that, but the reason I picked Delta was because is it was one of the best airlines, um mm -hmm. highly rated. And on top of that, the research behind my findings was basically I found out that airlines are used to running basically with no cash or nearly or like even on bankruptcy. So airlines can still run while they're going through bankruptcy because by the way, they went bankrupt back in the two thousands. So I said, Well, if this airline dropped to X dollars and I know in the past they're able to come back from that. And I know for a fact the only reason they went down this much was basically this event right here. Do I think they will not survive? The answer is no, I think they'll survive because basically they can run during bankruptcies and all those things. Now, my investment paid off, right? But it wasn't mm -hmm. as deep as an analysis as I would have preferred when it goes to, like when it goes into actually making a really good investment. So I, uh -huh. I've made so far around 103% on my investment. But it's not, that does not mean I was right. It, it doesn't. It doesn't mean airlines are just, for example, like a great investment. It's actually right, a crappy right. investment. But I just happened to buy, mm -hmm. for example, like during a really good time. So I'll sell that by the end of this month, most likely. You heard it here first, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make my money, and then and then leave. And then the next time I actually buy a stock, 
I'll do a, a full intense review. That way, when I buy next time, it's going to be for the long term. Because as you know, I'm a long term guy. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So how was your trip? To Puerto Rico? To Mexico. Or not Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm going down there now. I'm going down there. Um, I'm going down there next week. I, I got an apartment that I'm, I'm going to look at. Hopefully it's um it's solid. If it is, I'll, mm. I'll sign the lease. I'll stay there for um twelve months. If I like it, I'll stay there even longer. But the goal is to oh, be in Puerto Rico for like um three five years. Um, save a lot of money in taxes. Um, get financial security a lot faster, and then uh -huh. potentially live there or just go to Florida. That that's really the goal. It's it's pretty nice over there, man. You ever been there? No, I haven't. That's why I was asking. How you got was, you got five k, like? man. Once you once you're done with this mortgage, you got five k to go out there and travel if you want to. You should visit. Oh. Oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, you'll be able to do all, it's, all that. It's stuff. on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's on my bucket list. It's Hawaii, nice. Puerto Rico, Alaska. I've got it all mapped out. Alaska. Yeah, I, just that... I have my money for it. That's all. You, you want to go Alaska? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alaska's cold, man. I don't like the cold, but no, <laughs> Alaska's not cold all the time, and it's just, you just go there when it's convenient. Okay. Okay. Fair, fair point, DC. Yeah. Fair point, DC. <laughs> I'm right. not going there when it's 90 <laughs> degrees below zero now. <laughs> <laughs> no, not going right. to do it. All right, DC. Okay. Well, great, great conversation. And again, these calls are not like a one-time thing. So if you want to schedule a call, feel free to do so while they're still available. Okay. Thanks very much. Have All a right. great day. Have a good day, DC. Peace out. Mm -hmm. All right. Guys, this is why I say, I say this all the time. By the way, there was another point here. He could take out his contributions and then use that to pay the mortgage and then basically be like, okay. But that would reset all of his potential gains for the future. So that might be an issue also. Now, one thing is this. This is why I always say, for example, you don't need to make millions of dollars to be financially free very quickly. But Tommy, he's not financially free because basically he's going to have just basically $16,000 income. I hear you, but hear me, for example. This guy is going to have a paid off home, a secure 16K coming in for social security and his pension or whatever else it is. And then on top of that, he's only spending $9,000. So he has a surplus of $5,000, okay? That is the beautiful thing here. And on top of that, if you wanna use that money to go ahead and invest more, great. Does he have to? Kinda, right? Cause the point is he's not, maybe you know what I will do? I probably bulk up the emergency fund to 12 months just in case anything crazy does happen, but he doesn't really need all that because that money is going to be coming in like clockwork, clockwork, clockwork. Now, what I mean is basically you don't have to make millions to be wealthy, to be happy or any of that stuff. There is no relationship between happiness and richness, okay? And this guy seems to be living a pretty happy life, laughing and smiling about people calling him cheap and so on. And people call me cheap also, okay, DC, but great conversation. Comment down below and let me know what would you do in that place right there, okay? Would you retire? Would you walk longer? And by the way, at DC's age of 64, I wouldn't retire. I'd probably pivot to another career that gives me, for example, a lot more fulfillment. Because one thing I don't want to do is basically be 64 and have nothing to do. And you might say, well, Tommy, he's been doing something for the past like 45 years. I get that. But it's important that you find fulfillment because if you don't, it's kind of like more like you're just waking up and like blindlessly going throughout your day. And that's not what I want for myself. But guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. And if you want to call me live on this show, well, schedule a call, link down below and get in while you still can. Because by the way, calls are limited, but they're free, by the way, but they're being taken up very quickly. So get in while you still can. Okay, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, if you want to follow me on Instagram, here's my Instagram right here at Tommy Bryson on top of also here is another video right here. Click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow. And as always, peace.